Imagine this, you've known someone for years, and suddenly, they start acting like a completely different person. Maybe they've become impulsive, started saying inappropriate things, or lost all interest in hobbies they once loved. You might think it's stress, depression, or even a midlife crisis. But what if it's something far more serious? This could be an early warning sign of frontotemporal dementia, FTD, a lesser-known but devastating form of dementia that often strikes earlier than Alzheimer's. It doesn't just affect memory, it changes the very core of who a person is. Today, we'll break down everything you need to know about FDD, the symptoms, the science behind it, and whether there are any treatments available. By the end, you'll have a clear understanding of this complex disease and how it differs from other forms of dementia. Let's dive in. FDD is a neurodegenerative disease that primarily affects the frontal and temporal lobes of the brain, areas responsible for personality, behavior, and language. Unlike Alzheimer's, which usually begins with memory loss, FDD often starts with unexplained behavioral changes or speech difficulties. It's the third most common form of dementia, but it's the leading cause of dementia in people under 65. Because of its early onset and unusual symptoms, it's frequently misdiagnosed as a psychiatric disorder. FDD was first described in 1892 by Dr. Arnold Pick, which is why it was originally called Pick's disease. Later, Dr. Alois Alzheimer, yes, the same one who discovered Alzheimer's disease, identified Pick bodies, abnormal clumps of proteins in the brain that are a hallmark of this condition. Over the years, researchers discovered different subtypes of FDD, each affecting the brain in unique ways. That brings us to the key question, what are the symptoms, and how do they differ from other dementias? Frontotemporal dementia isn't a one-size-fits-all disease. It comes in different forms, each affecting distinct areas of the brain and causing unique symptoms. Understanding these types can help recognize early warning signs and provide better support for those affected. Let's dive into the three main types of FDD. 1. Behavioral Variant FDD, BVFTD, the most noticeable change. Behavioral Variant Frontotemporal Dementia, BVFTD, is the most common form of FDD, primarily affecting the frontal lobes, which control personality, decision-making, and impulse regulation. Unlike Alzheimer's, which starts with memory loss, BVFTD manifests through dramatic personality changes, emotional detachment, and poor judgment. A person who was once responsible and kind may become impulsive, inappropriate, or even indifferent to loved ones. They may struggle to recognize social norms, leading to embarrassing or reckless behavior such as making offensive comments, shoplifting, or showing a lack of empathy in emotional situations. Since they often don't realize their behavior has changed, family members are left confused and frustrated. One of the hallmark symptoms of BVFTD is impulsivity and compulsive behaviors. Patients may engage in repetitive actions like clapping, pacing, or constantly repeating phrases. Eating habits also shift often leading to cravings for sweets, overeating, or even consuming inedible objects. Some individuals become fixated on routines, eating the same food daily or obsessively collecting useless items. Despite these major changes, they typically retain their memory in the early stages, which makes BVFTD difficult to diagnose and often mistaken for psychiatric disorders like depression or bipolar disorder. As the disease progresses, individuals lose their ability to plan, reason, and regulate emotions, making them increasingly dependent on caregivers. Conversations become difficult as they fail to pick up on social cues, respond inappropriately, or lose interest in meaningful interactions. Unlike Alzheimer's, where patients may recognize their decline, those with BVFTD often remain unaware of their condition, making caregiving particularly challenging. Since there is no cure, management focuses on behavioral strategies, structured routines, and professional support to ensure a better quality of life for both the patient and their family. 2. Primary progressive aphasia, PPA, when language starts to slip. 
Primary progressive aphasia, PPA, is a type of frontotemporal dementia that primarily affects language abilities rather than memory or behavior in its early stages. The condition damages the brain's language centers, making it increasingly difficult for individuals to communicate. People with PPA may struggle to find the right words, mix up sounds, or construct sentences correctly, even though their thinking ability remains intact. At first, they might pause frequently while speaking, substitute incorrect words, or have trouble following conversations. Unlike typical age-related forgetfulness, this decline in language skills steadily worsens, leading to frustration and social withdrawal. There are three main subtypes of PPA, non-fluent slash agrammatic, semantic, and logopenic. The non-fluent slash agrammatic variant makes speech effortful and grammatically incorrect. People may sound as though they are speaking in broken phrases or have trouble pronouncing words. The semantic variant leads to a loss of word meaning, where individuals can still speak fluently but struggle to understand or recognize common words and objects. Meanwhile, the logopenic variant primarily affects word retrieval, causing frequent pauses and difficulty repeating phrases, even though grammar and pronunciation remain intact. Regardless of the subtype, reading, writing, and comprehension also deteriorate over time, making communication progressively more difficult. As PPA advances, individuals may become completely unable to speak or understand language, forcing them to rely on gestures, writing, or assistive communication devices. Unlike other forms of dementia, memory and reasoning skills often remain intact in the early stages leading to a heartbreaking situation where individuals are aware of their decline but cannot express themselves. Speech therapy, communication aids, and structured routines can help patients maintain their ability to connect with loved ones for as long as possible. 3. FDD with motor symptoms, when movement is affected. Frontotemporal dementia, FDD, isn't just about changes in personality or language, it can also affect movement. Some individuals with FDD develop motor symptoms similar to Parkinson's disease or ALS, a myotrophic lateral sclerosis, leading to difficulties with coordination, muscle stiffness, tremors, or involuntary movements. These symptoms arise because FDD can damage brain regions responsible for motor control, making everyday activities progressively harder. Early signs might include slowness of movement, muscle rigidity, or difficulty with fine motor tasks like buttoning a shirt or holding utensils. Some individuals also experience unexplained muscle twitches or weakness, which can lead to falls, balance problems, or trouble swallowing over time. There are three primary motor syndromes associated with FDD, corticobasal syndrome, CBS, progressive supranuclear palsy, PSP, and FDD with motor neuron disease, FTDMND. CBS causes muscle rigidity, jerky movements, and an inability to control limb movement, sometimes making a person feel as though their arm or leg is acting on its own. PSP affects balance and eye movement, leading to frequent falls, stiffness, and difficulty looking up or down. FTDMND is closely linked to ALS and leads to progressive muscle weakness difficulty swallowing, and eventually impaired breathing. Unlike typical FDD, where cognitive and behavioral changes are prominent, motor symptoms may appear first in these cases, making diagnosis challenging. As the disease progresses, individuals with FDD and motor symptoms may become wheelchair-bound, lose the ability to speak, or require assistance with basic functions like eating and dressing. Since these conditions have no cure, Treatment focuses on physical therapy, speech therapy, and assistive devices to maintain independence for as long as possible. While medications can help manage stiffness or spasms, the condition continues to worsen over time. Understanding these motor symptoms is crucial, as early recognition can help individuals and their families prepare for the progressive challenges ahead. How is FDD diagnosed? Diagnosing frontotemporal dementia FDD, can be challenging because its symptoms often overlap with other neurological or psychiatric conditions, such as Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, 
or even depression. There is no single test for FDD, so doctors rely on a combination of clinical evaluations, brain imaging, and cognitive tests to make a diagnosis. The process typically begins with a detailed medical history and a discussion of symptoms, particularly focusing on behavioral changes, language difficulties, or motor impairments. Neurological and cognitive assessments help evaluate memory, problem-solving skills, and language abilities. Brain imaging tests like MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, or PET, positron emission tomography, scans are crucial in identifying frontal and temporal lobe shrinkage, which is characteristic of FDD. In some cases, genetic testing may be recommended, especially if there is a family history of FDD-related disorders. Because FDD can mimic other conditions, misdiagnosis is common, and many patients are initially treated for psychiatric disorders before receiving a correct diagnosis. Consulting a specialist in neurodegenerative diseases can improve diagnostic accuracy. Early detection is essential, as it allows individuals and families to plan for care, explore treatment options, and participate in clinical trials that may offer future hope. Is there a cure or treatment for FDD? Currently, there is no cure for frontotemporal dementia, FDD, and no treatments can stop or reverse its progression. However, several strategies can help manage symptoms and improve quality of life. Medications such as antidepressants and antipsychotics may be prescribed to help control behavioral symptoms like agitation, compulsive behaviors, or emotional instability. Unlike Alzheimer's, FDD does not typically involve memory loss in the early stages, so standard dementia medications like cholinesterase inhibitors are not effective. Speech and language therapy can be beneficial for individuals with primary progressive aphasia, PPA, helping them maintain communication skills for as long as possible. Occupational and physical therapy can assist those with motor symptoms, improving mobility and coordination. Additionally, behavioral interventions and structured routines can help manage impulsive behaviors and maintain independence. Since FDD is a progressive disease, long-term care planning is crucial. Support from caregivers, family members, and specialized support groups can make a significant difference in navigating the challenges of FDD. While research is ongoing, clinical trials are exploring potential treatments that target the underlying causes of FDD. Staying informed about these developments offers hope for future advancements in treatment and care. Frontotemporal dementia may not be as well known as Alzheimer's, but its impact is just as devastating, especially since it often affects people in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. If this video helped you understand FDD better, consider liking and sharing it to spread awareness. And if you want more content on brain health, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. What are your thoughts on today's topic? Have you or someone you know been affected by FDD? Let me know in the comments, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.